Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and we are here today to discuss Spell in a Bottle. So, Spell in a Bottle is an artifact out of the Karadran Overlord's book. It is uh, able to be taken on an ether chemist, and basically what it does is it lets you automatically cast one endless spell once per game. It cannot be unbound, but you do have to still pay the points for that spell. So it's an auto cast, um, cannot be unbound, and um, it can be any endless spell. It can be an army specific endless spell, it can be a generic endless spell, it can be anything. So taking this artifact you basically either need to go with no Skyport uh, or Barak Mornar, Barak Urbaz, or take a battalion to get an extra artifact. So that is one of the hills you kind of have to climb with this, is that kind of getting an Aether Chemist with uh, a spell in a bottle can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So it's really going to depend on your list construction and what you're thinking of doing, how you're thinking of doing it. In addition, uh, in some lists, the ether chemist himself is sort of a tax and you may not actually want to be running him. So that's definitely something to consider here that you may be putting yourself in a position where you're taking a battalion that you wouldn't ordinarily take or taking a skyport you wouldn't ordinarily uh, be taking just to get this artifact on an ether chemist that you wouldn't otherwise be taking that costs you 90 points to get an endless spell so some interesting other combinations just to think about here um i don't want to drone on too much about like the possible downsides of the spell in a bottle i just wanted to you know kind of illuminate the restrictions um there's really nice uh, combo power with uh, Zilfin and Mornar. Both of them give you the ability to have a hero phase move. And what that really lets you do is get your ship uh, with the Aether Chemist on it out somewhere more advantageous on the battlefield to then throw out your endless spell still in the hero phase because it's not beginning of hero phase it's just during the hero phase that it has to go out so it lets you get optimal placement of where you want that endless spell to go so if you have an endless spell where positioning is really important uh combining with zilfin or mornar could definitely uh, be something to look at uh, other things of note here, these spells can still be dispelled by your opponent, even though they cannot be unbound when they're initially cast. So high casting value spells are usually going to be more valuable to you because they're going to be much harder for your opponent to get rid of. Um, predatory spells can be risky. Uh, of course, if you... Um, get the top of any given turn or uh, any battle round your opponent gets to move the first endless spell and that could be taking your own endless spell and throwing it back at your units which can be pretty bad although there's some definitely that we'll explore in here that really mitigate that risk so without further ado let's get into it so one of the most popular ones is the Warp Lightning Vortex. So that does a lot of damage. It hits every movement phase and it also hits uh, when the spell is first cast. So it really can have the potential to put out a lot of damage. It slows down your opponent's movement. Um, it has a casting value of 8, so that is very difficult for your opponent to get rid of. 
and it's not a predatory spell, so you don't have to worry about it moving around. You can sort of place it where you want it to go and make that sort of be a no-go zone and take down your opponent's units and not have as much concern for yourself. The downside on this one is that it's 100 points, and that is pretty pricey for an endless spell. That is as high as they go. It is, however, really good. A lot of tournament lists that have uh, taken some top prizes or have placed very well have used the Warp Lightning Vortex with Spell in a Bottle. So that is definitely one to consider there. And just as a side note, this is out of uh, the Skaven Endless Spells. Up next is the Soul Scream Bridge. This one is out of Forbidden Power. It essentially sets up uh, two ends of a bridge 12 inches away from each other, and it allows you to teleport units from one side of the bridge to the other. You usually only need to use this once, so even though it has a relatively low casting value, it's not that big of an issue. Um, your opponent probably won't even try to dispel it unless it's in their way. It does have that nice ability of having a decent base size, so it is kind of a movement disruption for your opponent, so it may be something they dispelled just to kind of get it off the battlefield. This is really strong in particular with um, your allies and Dwarden units you're bringing in with Brock Thring. It gives you a really wide selection of units that you can teleport. It lets you alpha strike, it lets you alpha block. Um, it's less useful with Karadron Overlord's units because you already have that mobility with the ships. So you don't really need this kind of mobility for your Karadron Overlord's units. What it does is lets you take, say, a big block of Iron Drakes and throw those in front of your opponent that um, moving across the bridge does not actually count as a move. It's a setup, so you get to get double shots on your Iron Drakes. So you can do... a ton of damage um they're roughly going to be putting out twice as much damage per point as any of your karadron overlords units when they are uh blasting away with double shots so they can really put a serious hurting on your opponent if you take say a unit of 20 of them it's also a unit of 20 wounds on a 4-up save that is in your opponent's face. So that's something that's going to be a little bit difficult for them to remove. So you're going to get more than just, you know, that one turn of shooting out of them. You'll get some opportunity to do some additional things with them as well. Other really good candidates. Um, hammerers could be a good candidate for this. Um, if you are going the Fire Slayer route, um, your Hearthguard Berserkers might be a good option here um, if you don't want to tunnel them. They do kind of have their own ability to do that. Um, alternatively, you could send over some Volkites. There's uh, other options as well. In terms of alpha blocking, you could use some Iron Breakers or some Longbeards to get in the way of your opponent and have a, a you know, a block of three up save dudes that are hard to remove uh, out there in front of your opponent. Moving right along, uh, the Darkfire Demon Rift is another great option. It puts out a ton of damage and it gets even stronger when your opponent has a bunch of wizards. It has a low casting value, so it's probably going to get dispelled. Um, the flip side is you can go and you know run it through your opponent's wizards and kill them all and hopefully uh, take them all out and not worry about it getting dispelled and then just have it uh, you know cruise around your opponent's back lines and do a lot of damage. 
All right, the Realm Surge Rupture. This is another one out of the uh, Slaves to Darkness book, like the Darkfire Demon Rift. Uh, it does quite a bit of damage. Uh, it's less points than the Demon Rift. It's a casting value 7, so it's a bit more difficult to dispel. And it also slows down your opponent's movement and creates a barrier in their way. So that's an interesting choice. I have seen that at on some top lists as well. Purple Son of Shyish. This is from um, the uh, original pack of Endless Spells. Um, it is really good at taking apart very resilient hordes because rather than doing uh, mortal wounds it is slaying models so when you're up against say Petrifex Elite it's going to do a much better job of thinning that out than say something that will do mortal wounds it has some kind of limited blowback on your own units a lot of times you're going to be in ships um, and not have units hanging around uh, you're generally going to be low model count, and this is much better against hordes. So uh, it really kind of has a uh, limited downside risk for you. And it has a casting value of 8, so it's going to be very hard for your opponent to get rid of. Ravenax Gnashing Jaws, that is one of our original Endless Spells as well. This one does a lot of damage, this time through Mortal Wounds. It's another one with casting value 8, so it's very hard to dispel. The downside here is that it can be fairly easily turned back on your own troops, and because it's doing mortal wounds, it could really do some damage to you. So that's something to definitely look out for. You, that one is perhaps less appealing in some ways than other options. The Aether Void Pendulum, another of our original Endless Spells. It's got a casting value of 6, so it makes it really easy to get rid of, but it does a lot of damage. It's doing D6 to everything it passes across, so it is really putting a hurting on your opponent. It's a little bit tricky to position, so you're probably going to want to pair this with Mornar or Zilfin. Um... The nice thing is, is that the movement restriction of it moving in a straight line in one direction really prevents it from blowing back on your own troops. You really can set it up in a way that it, it's not going to ever hurt you. It's just going to hurt your opponent. Up next is the Everblaze Comet. This is a uh, Stormcast Eternals Endless Spell. It does a ton of damage. Um... And it has a very long range. I believe it's 36 inches for the placement of this. So you don't need Zilfin or Mornar to get really good placement on it. However, this is casting value 6, so it's easy for your opponent to get rid of. And it costs 100 points, which is kind of a lot. This tends to work a lot better in a Stormcast army or at least when you're running a Stormcast Wizard, so that they can uh, recast it every time that it gets dispelled, uh, because the initial casting damage is stronger than the damage on later turns. However, just thinking about how you can build out a Karadran Overlord's list, you certainly could take um, a Stormcast Wizard and then perhaps a unit of Longbeards and the Everblaze Comet. You know, your Longbeards are going to be a good anvil unit and uh, a good objective holder, and they also have the ability to dispel endless spells. So you can actually get the optimal level of damage out of the Everblaze Comet by uh, having your Stormcast Wizard cast it, and then have it be dispelled by your long beards and then cast again and do that every turn. And then potentially if you want to use spell in a bottle along with it, 
you can use it to get that auto cast on the first turn. Wildfire Taurus. This is out of the Beasts of Chaos. And this is another one that does a lot of damage and it's really good at thinning out hordes. It's a casting value six, so it's kind of easy for your opponent to get rid of. It's a pretty decent sized base, so it can get in the way for your opponent and make uh, movement a little bit of a challenge if they can't get rid of it. And it also has this interesting bonus of making enemy units fight last, which in a Karajan Overlord's army isn't particularly important because you're usually going to be avoiding melee. But in a situation, and there certainly are some lists where you might want the additional melee power in there, this gives you a little bit of extra added protection to get multiple units into combat and make your opponent strike last and make sure your units get to attack at full power. And then we have the Geminids of Ulgish. Uh, they do a decent amount of damage. Each one does D3 every time uh, it moves. It's um, a very good defensive spell. It gives uh, gives out minus one to hit and uh, minus one to attack in melee. Um, the downside here is that if it blows back on your own troops, it's a major problem because that minus one to hit also affects shooting. And if you get a boat hit by this, that could be a real problem. It's casting value seven, so it's kind of in that middle range of being kind of difficult to dispel, but not like super difficult. Um, it's definitely an interesting choice. So that is it for now. Hopefully that is some food for thought for all of you guys. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are interested, we do have our Patreon link down below. So with that, I will talk to you all later.